It's Wednesday, and it's time for the Contrarians Live Chat. The topic tonight, warning, creepy, unsettling album covers. The panel's ready to go. I'm ready for crying out loud, so let's get started. Welcome, everybody. Hey, it's Wednesday, and we're here. It's the Contrarians Live Chat. The gang's all here. Jamie Laszlo, Todd Evans, Martin Popoff, Peter Kern, myself. I'd like to welcome everybody in this chat, because without this, we could not do this without you. So, yes, I'm in Florida right now doing this, so, you know, let's just give it a whirl and see how it goes. Hopefully, the stream doesn't cut out or anything. Just cross your fingers, gentlemen. All right. Thanks, everybody, in the comments. I'm glad to see everybody here. Gentlemen, are you ready? Tonight, we are talking warning creepy unsettling album covers we want to hear from you in the chat too so if you have anything we will try to get to you um but hey let's get started i'm just gonna go as i see it let's just go jamie todd martin peter and myself and we're gonna do two at a time and we're just gonna go round round the bend all right uh right. jamie it's up to you you're up all right i'm gonna start in the 70s and i'm gonna end in the 70s my first one, I'm going with the debut album by Uriah Heep, but it has to be that version right there. <laughs> very heavy. I figured very... that's the one you were talking about. Yes, this is awful. It's called it, it, the UK version is called very heavy, very humble. If they're leaving H's off, it's very horrific. It's <laughs> awful. Um, I look at it and I feel like I can almost smell it, and it's not a good smell. I have this version. Give me this version any day because I don't want that in my house. I do not want that in my house. I have one's creepy too, though. Yeah, both are creepy. Yeah, yeah that takes it to the next level, though. <laughs> and the the webbing on that or whatever that is looks a little bit like the hair on my next album, the Elf <laughs> debut. I hate, I hate this album cover. I do. Really? It, that it, you look at his hair. And it looks like Bob Wire, like you could cut yourself on that hair. And the weird thing is, we know how this album sounds. There's nothing heavy or evil about it. For crying out loud, you got Hoochie Coochie Lady as one of the songs. Uh, what else you got? Sit Down, Honey, Dixie Lee Junction. Junction. Does that look like the cut? That almost makes it more unsettling. <laughs> that This doesn't match the music. And I do hate that. But, hey, I found this uh, original pressing and had to have it, though. No, so that's cool. the first two. That's a hon honky tonk album. It yeah. is absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's not too bad though. You it's know, not, oh, it's not as bad as people the best say of it is. Hey, that's where Ronnie was then. Ronnie's done doo wop. He's done it all. Everybody, just yeah. give him a check. He'll sing it all. Yeah. All right, Todd Evans, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna kind of push the the limits of this uh, uh, definition because I this may not be creepy to some people, but I find it really kind of unsettling. This is. Anathema is the optimist from 2017, and it kind of looks like a car is coming out to get you. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This is this album is supposed to be the continued story of whatever happened to the character in a couple of albums prior to that. But on the inside, there are these little quotes, and uh, it says, "How did I get here? I don't belong here," and it's kind of unsettling. So uh, that's my first one. My second one. Now, there's no doubt that this one's creepy, and that's oh. IQ: The Road of Bones. Uh, sorry, Grant. I threw you. I, you I threw, threw me a curve. <laughs> Tom, <I forgot laughs> so uh, this is a graphic. This album right here, uh, 2014. I, I have been quoted as saying that this is my favorite album of all time. Um, it probably is a stunning album. Spooky sounding in parts. Um, I was disappointed to find out that it was about a serial killer, but it turns out that only the title track, "The Road of Bones," is about a serial killer. But here you see this guy here, you know, telling you to keep something a secret. On the inside, uh, you see somebody with a rock in their hand. And then on the back, you see somebody uh, with a shovel and they're they're walking away from a scene. And uh, that's actually Peter Nichols. That's Peter, the, the lead singer. That's his that's his torso right there and his hand in the other picture. But uh, I think this one's super creepy. 
And you were surprised to find out this was about a serial killer? I was. That's not, how I, that's not how I interpreted some of the songs, but oh, only okay. the one song is about a serial killer. And, and that one's pretty obvious. The rest of it is just is other topics. But yeah, yeah, that's spooky. Nice, nice. Yeah, no jangle right. pop on that album. No, no, no. no. It's pretty no. dark all the way through. All right. Before I get to my uh, picks, oh, uh, let's see. Jan has mentioned a golden earring to the hilt. Yeah, that's a really good, creepy hypnosis one. More on hypnosis a little later. We've got Deal Strange Highways, the album cover Sig Pink Floyd, The Animals. There's another creepy, unsettling uh, hypnosis one. Strange Times, The Chameleons, one of my favorite albums of all time. A really nice illustration on that. Um, you know, that illustration reminds me a little bit of, um, you know, the, uh, the, the Blue Oyster Cult uh, illustrations that we got later from, uh, yeah. from Craig. We got Born Again. Yeah, I don't know how creepy Born Again is. It's more funny, but we've got, uh, let's see, Butthole Surfer's Locust Abortion Technician is Disturbing. Yeah, Love Beach. Uh, <laughs> that is disturbing. <laughs> Rolling Stones, uh, Goat Head. Bring up Love Beach. <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got John Entwistle, Smash Your Head Against the Wall. Yeah, that is a creepy yeah. one for sure. Kiss Creatures yeah. Tonight. Eh, I don't know. I love that yeah. album cover. Captain Beyond, Sufficiently Breathless. Uh, creeps me out. Funkadelic Maggot Brain. Um, yeah, let's see. Dio dressed as an elf. Uh, yeah, Court of the Crimson King, definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh, Queen News of the World. Cure, Faith, uh, Pornography, and The Head on the Door. Yeah, all of theirs are pretty unsettling. Uh, David Bowie, Diamond Dogs. Bowie Lodger with a, all, a kilter there. So, uh, all right. So, uh, my first two picks. Um, I had to go with um, one of my famous creepiest albums of all time to me. Uh, it, it came to mind because I find this album cover completely creepy. Grant's got the, I think that's a reticulated album cover thing. My, mine's just a regular, although it's an import one. It's the u new release I bought as a kid. Yeah, this album absolutely creeps me out. And this whole Raven on there with the little Stranglers logo. Even the back is kind of creepy with the band on, on this long chip. And then, of course, I've shown this before, but Stranglers, you know, has a lot of creepy album covers. Yeah. Men in Black. There's live excerpt. Look at that. The hand coming out of the blood red thing. And then let's see, we got some some no more heroes going on. We've got some that one black and white. And then the famous one of the recent ones where the kid walks up and sees all of the stranglers hanging from the swings. Yeah, they are uh, just creepy. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> definitely and even the debut is kind of creepy. They look pretty uh -huh. menacing there. Uh, my second one is uh, Public Image Limited. Again, one of my most favorite creepy albums of all time i don't even know how you hold this up i think this is the way you hold it up side but yeah just this kind of weird you know psychotic looking girl shot you know it's kind of all blurry and everything no text on the cover whatsoever uh on the back you've got this which is creepy in itself it's like what what kind of weird rules are these guys following or not <laughs> and uh and basically uh it's it's one of the most unsettling sounding albums of all oh time. my god yes very very bizarre our scary stuff i bought this as a kid and it 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 scarred me for life i think this is like 1979 or something isn't it 81 81 mm -hmm. yeah yeah it, yeah it creeped me out big time martin uh, i got a, it when i was a kid too and my oh, yeah. neighbor buddy and i we played it and we just sat there and couldn't believe what <laughs> it was just the most disturbing stuff at that age. Yeah, no oh kidding, God. no but kidding. But it's a great yeah. record. I like this record. I, I had another PIL out too. I mean, they're all, they all break oh. the rules and they're all weird. Yeah. I mean, that's even creepy in itself. That one's creepy. Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. And with the this dash is, I mean, yeah, just that that whole band is uh, is uh, is an unsettling vibe. So <laughs> anyway, take it away, Peter. All right. Um, any band that's got goth overtones or is a gothic uh, is just perfect for this uh, episode. So you've got to pick The Cure. And I've chosen Pornography, their fourth yeah. album from 82. Yeah. So this is part of their goth trilogy with 17 Seconds and Faith. Um, you, basically, half of the uh, Cure catalog, their album covers are distorted faces. And this is just one of them. And I've always found this quite unsettling. It's one of my favorite uh, Cure albums. And yeah, I think this just picks it to a T. It's uber creepy. Mm -hmm. um, the next one I'm going to go to, just a, a different take on it, is the Cure's uh, self-titled album in 2004. Now, children see things in a different way. Uh, Robert Smith uh, tasked his nieces and nephews to do drawings, uh, summarizing um, a good dream and a bad dream. And he put a collage of the best uh, drawings into the album cover. I think it's a little bit disturbing. 
Um, it's a little Everybody's bit off back. kilter. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's got a, a sort of a, a sort of an off kilter take. So I found that uh, quite unsettling. And um, yeah, I think this uh, comes into the category of of creepy. The cure, nice. uh, two thousand and four. Good, good job, good, good job. We've got a mention for Axe Offering. Yeah, that's a good, good mm -hmm. scary heavy metal album cover. One, Heaven and Hell, The Devil You Know. Uh, let's see. We've got Merciful Fate. Don't break the oath. Yeah, the the old yellow yellow cover with. Uh, the devil on it except blood of the nations yeah it's got some good realistic looking blood on it i think that one bought the hoople mad shadows that's a good call too that's mm -hmm. a very creepy one not a very heavy album either we've got caught somewhere in time by maiden the original scorpions virgin killer typo negative bloody kisses uh yesterday and today beatles yeah there's an there's <laughs> a, an infamous first creepy album cover one of the most iconic ones of all time right rainbow mm -hmm. self-titled quite right condition critical with the mask thing amen by amen sabbath bloody sabbath yeah that's uh that's, that's a creepy. standard absolutely creepy one that's one i wrote a whole chapter in a book about how you know how do they even get that past the censors at the time to have that thing come out on warner brothers right gold said suit fire of unknown origin all right grant take all it right away. here we go uh click 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 all right here we go uh okay my first one this is creepy very creepy. The band's kind of creepy. But I mentioned this one before. The Misfits, the Collection 2, came out on Caroline 1995. This is creepy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? What was this? Jamie, where'd he go? I need him and he's gone. Wasn't this? We got a whole box set of theirs that comes in a coffin. <laughs> but Jamie, the, the, the person on this cover was from a serial in the 40s, correct? Some, yes, uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah I, I forget right. the details. And here he's on that damn channel over on Sea of Tranquility. Come on, man. All right. Yeah, so it might be earlier than the 40s. I think it could be the 50s. I don't know, but I All think right. this... Come on, can you get something creeper? That's creepy. My number two, I'm going to go with The Residence, Demons Dance Alone from 2002. Wow. So, yeah, it's creepy. <laughs> well, that's but just This weed. is a photographer... <laughs> You could tell there's a lot of Photoshop going on here, but you've got these wrists coming down from the ceiling yeah. and the creature holding the eyeball head. How weird. I mean, wow. it's the residence though, but yeah. you want it creepy. There's creepy. So uh, he took, he took it off head. of one of them. I wonder which one. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they're hanging from the ceiling. I yeah. don't know. It's weird. I, I don't think you can unsee that album cover now. Yeah. That's weird. Exactly. Yeah. That's weird. You, you might have won. You might have won. I might have won. Yeah. Although we've got a mention in the comments for Demon, the unexpected guest. Now that's very creepy yeah. as well. Slayer Hell Awaits. We got Countdown to Extinction. Uh, Korn's debut again. Zeppelin in through the outdoor. PIL second edition. Dead Can Dance. Led Zeppelin Presence. More on that one later. But uh, more from Jamie right now. Yeah. All right. Let's fast forward uh, all the way to 2023. And an album that came out four months ago. Oh. Brand new band. I'm pretty sure they're brand new. Witch Throat Serpent. And you got yourself. Haunted House has creeped me out. And you got the Haunted House and the blood dripping underneath it. And it's called Trove of Oddities at the Devil's Driveway. And it's got songs based on old horror movies. But what really creeps me out is when you turn it around and you get that chick with the wow. snake in the eye. Oh, wow. You see that coming to you. And <laughs> you're running. So we're on the outside of the haunted house. So let's go inside to the haunted house with o Opeth, Ghost Reveries. And, you know, Hard you to can see. go with a lot of Opeth albums. This one with the candles and the shadow by the window in the back. And it's got ghost in the title. That creeps me out. Yeah. In a good way, though. In a good, good one. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every Opeth cover is pretty creepy, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Even oh, this yeah. one, the one I'm wearing with the haunted house yeah. type thing. Cool. All right, That's Todd, you're up. Too. Okay. Well, my next two kind of go together, and they're kind of uh, bands we don't talk about much on on our shows. But this is Guadalcanal Diaries 2 by 4 with a very angry young man about to hit you with one. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know what got, what's got him so upset, but... Uh, it, it, it can't be good. And in that, 
in that no. same vein, here's Guster is lost and gone forever. And I don't know what these two uh, these kids are up to, but they're uh, they're causing, causing trouble. Some, some trouble either a long time ago or they're just super creepy now. But uh, yeah, yeah, those are those two. Uh, I kind of thought went together. Nice, good job. Uh, good. The kids, like are, kids are today. Yeah, yeah. I like what that. Do? I like that. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a mention for Riot Rock City with uh, with our favorite Seal guy. Children of the Corn album covers. Get yes. Dead Kennedy's plastic <laughs> surgery disasters. Creepy or in bad taste or both, says Steve Polari. Uh, Abominog by Heaps, says Marlon Hill. Uh, yep. Let's see. We've got Trout Mask Replica. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. Uh, Moon Doc, Get Mooned. A Genesis Nursery Crime, Savoy Brown looking in. Yep. Wind and Weathering from Genesis has a creepy melancholy vibe, says Norman Richardson. Um, Poison Look with the Cat Dragged In. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there we go. So, all right, my next two um, are um, where did it go? Here we go. Uh, I'm going with uh, Joy Division and Closer. So again, my theme so far, it's not going to hold up throughout, but these are all creepy albums, period. And I think being a creepy album helps your album cover to seem creepy to you. Uh, so this one definitely does. You know, it just says closer on the cover, not Joy Division. You've got one of these iconic old, uh, you know, picture things. The back is creepy. All these factory ones are very sparse and creepy like that. And of course, with Joy Division, you've even got the debut, which is pretty creepy, of course, and iconic. And then even the uh, the double posthumous album still is creepy. Um, you know, it's just got nothing on it. It's all blind stamped. It's it's stamped and printed, but it's actually stamped printing. And even on the back, it's the same thing. And then it gate folds out to show you basically absolutely nothing except for some songs. So that's definitely creepy. And then my next one is, uh, so this is a little bit of a sermon here. Um, so a lot of people won't know this album, but it is creepy as all hell. The Ghost, uh, When You're Dead, One Second. Uh, this is a Birmingham band in 1971. They only made one album. This is one of those super, you know, $500,000 rarity things. But mine is actually a, uh, a reprinted bootleg, uh, but it's made to look exactly like the original. So it's just the band hanging out in a cemetery like this. It sounds a little bit, there's some kind of satanic -y stuff on it, but it's, it's kind of like psych mixed with early deep purple. Um, I wrote some liner notes for a CD reissue of it. And surely the female vocalist got co-female and male, vo uh, male vocalist. She wouldn't talk to me. We don't, I had to do it by email, uh, but that's what the band looks like. And it's got that weird title. It's literally, it's called when you're dead dash one second. So it's one of those weird, weird wow. titles. Uh, and I wanted to just show, because I was going to pick this one in a similar vein. Search Party is also a creepy kind of like uh, fire and brimstone culty uh, um, Jesus freak 1969 single album only by these guys, the Search Party. And again, the theme with these two is the, is the grainy 60 shots of a band on a creepy album um you know black and white grainy but this search party montgomery chapel is a very creepy album it's a little bit like uh psychedelic acoustic trouble it's like they were trying to uh to be a christian band but they just freaked everybody out with it it's just very very weird it's kind of a it's kind of a classic so that's a cd of it um so that is my two uh Excellent. let me just see here quickly uh what else do we got coming in uh we got gary newman replica says norman richardson uh, Anima, definitely. So that's uh, some tool there. Uh, Steely Dan Countdown to Ecstasy, Tool Undertow and Anima, uh, Megadeth Euthanasia, yeah, Brain Salad Surgery, a really evil looking Geiger one there, right? We know Geiger did Danzig too, Lucifer's Friend self titled. There we go. Turn it uh, back over to Peter. Okay. Well, this album cover or well, this album is 23 years, oh, 53 years old. Black Sabbath, the debut, you've got to put this in. It still um, doesn't fail to have an impact. Yep. And uh, just a little bit of trivia, they tracked down the model and her name is Louisa Livingston. And apparently she was up at 4 a.m. in the morning. It was freezing cold. They had all these dry ice machines, but they produced one of the most iconic album covers of all time. And it is just super creepy and powerful to this very day. Yeah. Um, Keeping with the Black Sabbath theme, I'm going to go with Ozzy and the Blizzard of Oz. 
in 1980. Now, considering this guy saw The Exorcist 400 times, um, <laughs> I, I can't imagine who would want to see that 400 times. Love the movie, but anyway. I might have seen it pretty close to 400. <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. Um, there's Ozzy, and he's just continuing the theme. I, I like this one. I think it's just yeah. super well-constructed, and yeah. it really you can really tell this is – making a statement this is what my album sounds like and yeah. um it's one of the most iconic heavy metal album covers of all time so you've got to whack it in blizzard yeah. of oz ozzy osborne nice job nice picks yeah, yeah. excellent super all right grant take, take right. it away uh let's see let's go all right here's one the band the eels beautiful freak from 1996 you've got the kid yeah. with like the well i don't know if those are eel eyes or lizard eyes or I don't know, but this kid freaks me out. But this is a great record. Great record. In fact, all the Eels albums, the whole catalog, I don't think there's a weak album in it. That, but that, this freaks me out. That still freaks me out after all these years. And I don't even like the way it, the, the, the font that they use for Eels. I think that's scary, too. The, yeah, it the freaks me out, is, too. The whole yeah. thing's <laughs> freaking yeah. me but out. When I was a kid, I would have screamed. Yeah. <laughs> now, I think this is the next one I'm choosing... I, I think this is a photograph, but maybe it's retouched quite a bit, but I'm going to go with quiet riot mental health. Is that a, I could be wrong, but I, it looks like a photograph from here, but this creeps me so. out. It's all in that. I looked at it closely. I think it might be a painting. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm throwing it out there anyway, yeah. but uh, it is creepy. It's that whole, you know, Halloween kind of thing. It's that's like their mascot, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. That's the QR mascot. Yeah, yeah, it might be a painting, but if it is, it's damn good. So anyway, yeah. that's my other choice. It's well, it's a mm. classic album cover, you have to admit. Nice, nice. All right. All right. Turn it over to Jamie. Okay. I'm gonna go into some folk horror. Folk horror is a, a type of uh subgenre horror movie. There's not a ton of those movies out there, but they are creepy movies that normally involve hippies. That like looks like they're going to Woodstock, but they're probably going to some kind of sacrifice, devil worshiping thing instead. Hence, witchcrafts, the alchemist cover. Mm. And you have a very young lady there praying, and I don't think she's praying to Jesus. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. uh, and she's got, of course, it, she's always got to be in a field with the folk horror. And then I'm going to go with, that's a 2007 album. This is actually, I think, from 2019, maybe. Green Lung, Woodland Rights. And here we go with more folk horror with mm -hmm. them gathering around. And hmm. they're, they're actually going to release their uh, third album, November 6th. And these are one of those bands where it's a sticky thing, right? Are they serious or are they, nah, it's a gimmick. I don't know. So that always creeps me out when I don't know if they really mean it or not. Hmm. Yeah, I, who knows? I they're know. very good, though. I mean, they sound like good Black Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. Have ne All never right. heard of them before. I have no idea. Before we move on here, William Walker, good to see you. Uh, Cuckoo by De uh, Debbie Harry. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Oh, yes. I mentioned uh, Black Widow. Um, sacrifice, yeah, it's pretty creepy. Uh, D Rocker, Dark Song Shout, uh, the Demon debut, yeah, and Unexpected Guest, and the Plague for that matter are all pretty creepy looking. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Demon, yeah, Night of the Demon, Demon. Honestly, 10 year old me was creeped out by uh, where did that go? I'm popping by me here, but I oh, think right here, Sergeant Pepper. There we go. Uh, Accident of Birth, uh, Misfits Earth AD, Napalm Death Scum, says William Walker. BM Bolt says Diamond Dogs, David Bowie. We've got Louis Big and Dumais says Bathory Under the Sign of the Black Mark. Uh, Testament, Souls of Black. Yeah, that's pretty creepy. Merciful Night, Fate 9. Yeah, that's my favorite Merciful Fate album cover. I love that one. I think it's got some silver ink on it, too. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's a really good album, too. That's probably the best besides the first couple there. Claw Shelts, Time. Uh, Time Wind, Nine Inch Nails, Downward Spiral. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Reminds me of King Crimson Thrack, that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. So uh, over to uh, where we were Todd. I think we were Todd, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. yep. Okay. So I could have gone with uh, any number of this band's covers, but I decided to go with In Absentia by uh, Porcupine Tree. And um, I... You know, I don't know if there's ever really been anything written about what this is supposed to actually represent, 
but even even the picture of the band on the back cover is pretty spooky. <laughs> but uh, mm. but yeah, I mean, it could have gone with Dead Wing. That's also pretty creepy, and some of those early albums. But um, my next one is uh, Todd Rundgren, Nearly Human. And uh, I used to know what this what this actually was. I think it has something to do with blood. But uh, Rundgren was actually is actually credited for doing the the cover. But it, the the liner note says it was done at uh, Pixar. But uh, you've got I, which I guess is a bloody handprint that's got uh, six fingers on it. And nearly uh, human. <laughs> it's pretty unsettling to look at, and it's even the even the font is really kind of. Ooky, but uh yeah nice. seems very com- seems very computery you know like 1989 yeah. hey yeah. let's get that out the apple too and get working on this <laughs> exactly. you know? all right my next choice is uh the sex pistols never mind the bollocks when we were kids in 77 this creeped us out uh, and the whole idea here is why it creeped us out is that in conjunction with watching uh, news reports on CBC about punk, it looked like the UK was going to hell in a handcart, right? And this just looked like, you know, ransomy, lurid colors. We don't care about album covers. We don't care about anything. So this and also uh, even the the debut from The Clash uh, had the same sort of feel that it looked like, wow, UK is a scary place that, you know, all of society's breaking down. Even you look at the cover of the first Generation X album, uh, you know, Boomtown Rats with them kind of wrapped up Iggy Pop style in there. But this one, uh, definitely, uh, there was just something very unsettling about uh, about this that, uh, that sort of said something about the state of the world. Uh, and my next one is... Um, Completely unrelated, I suppose, except maybe the Sex Pistols were in reaction to bands like this. Led Zeppelin presence uh, with the object. I love the whole story of the object. I won't go into it here because I probably said it before, but Aubrey Powell told me all about it, and it was such a cool tale. Uh, but yeah, I've I've drawn the object into illustrations in my Flaming Telepaths book, and I've uh, you know made collages of it and stuff. And I love the whole kind of like you know, fifties grainy, uh, you know, I- idyllic landscapes here where this object, uh, which, which brings power to those, uh, you know, the back cover, look at that. That is, that is an awesome, that's awesome great. shot, you know, from inside the classroom. So that's a hypnosis one. And just for kicks, uh, you know, we had a mention earlier of golden earring to the hilt and pink Floyd animals. I thought I'd show a couple other hypnosis that are, are kind of creepy when they do these, these various, you know, photography things that seem really, uh, you know, um, austere and you don't know what's going on in them and something is strange happening. And same with, uh, same with UK danger money where the guy's washing up, you know, after probably some killing or something, because it's called danger money. Right. Um, so yeah. And, the, the, and they're always kind of really in, impersonal yet. They have people in them. You know, that that sort of thing, right? So uh, so there you go. Uh, over to Peter. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to Midnight Oil. And this EP, Bird Noises, always um, the cover creeped me out. Um, whether it's a, a young chick or some sort of species of bird, it's just something kind of unsettling about this. Um, yeah. Anyway... <laughs> I haven't got much more to say about well, that it one. Remind, it reminds me of the baby in a racer head for some yes. reason. Yeah, I, I was oh, yeah. And that's too. unsettling too. So. Yeah. That whole movie. Yeah. 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 But um, great EP, um, 1980, but yeah, just totally unsettling. Um, next one is another Midnight Oil. I thought I'd just couple it up. Um, is Red Sails and the Sunset from 1984. And this is... Uh, the apocalypse, you know, nuclear warfare, Sydney completely wiped out. So that's uh, creepy, unsettling um, to a T. And I, I think it's a wonderful album cover. If you look at the detail, somebody's actually worked it out where the epicenter is and all the landmarks are completely gone. Hmm. Neat. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really one. cool. Yeah. 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 All right, Grant, before we move on, yeah. let's see what else we got here. We got Wasp KFD. Says my music corner hollow moon says killers iron maiden. We've got venom black metal from Louis uh, heaven and hell. The devil, you know, is mentioned again, Lovecrafty and God creature. Uh, let's see. We've got their Nirvana incesticide. Yep. That's pretty creepy. Procom harem a shine on brightly is creepy with those weird lurid colors, right? Electric wizard come my fanatics. 
Um, yeah, the lead singer from Minoto was creepy enough. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Cool. No, he's a great guy. I, I love that band. I've seen them a few times here too, as well. <laughs> um, King Diamond, give me your soul, please. Hypnosis covers could be creepy. All right, Grant, over All to right, you. Cool. All right. Uh, it's trouble changing gears, kids. All right, here we go. My number five. And I knew no one would mention this, but I'm going to mention this damn thing today. We're going with the Human League oh, reproduction yeah. from 1979, <laughs> where we've got that. people all dressed up, walking on these baby dolls, but they're under they're under glass, but the glass is cracking. Now I don't know what they're trying to convey here, but you know it's the Human League. We're we're cool. We're we're hip. Um, That's but, the best album, Grant. Do you think? Yeah, I think all so. All right, there you go. Well, anyway, we're going to have some Human League here tonight. So um, the other one I'm picking is a record that my son was really into, the band Crystal Castles. And this is Crystal and oh. But it's got this kid walking through, like, a graveyard, and she's wearing all black. I don't know. Maybe the kids out there know more about this than I do, but this is like electronic music. He was really into this record, but the cover kind of always freaked me out. Okay. I don't know what's going on here, but it's odd anyway. So It's For a sure. Night of the Living Dead feel about it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah while well, her feet are like going out. Yeah. I don't. It's weird. I don't Join, know us. Join us. <laughs> Join us. Join yeah. us. I don't know. Crystal Castles. There you go. Nice. All right, Jamie, you're up. All right, I'm going to 1981 with a band from Belgium. I'm going to go with Universe Zero. I'm going to try to pronounce this. It's in French. Uh, du de Hours, I believe. There's that album cover there. And there's this one, which is a... This is a 2018 reissue. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, though. This Look, it looks like it's not English but it is english it says universe zero there and everything this music is some of the creepiest music i own yeah. it's mm. very hard to listen to i enjoy it every october but here's the thing it's a reissue and all my picks tonight are on vinyl because i just don't find cds very scary There's something about vinyl and that friction <laughs> and that surface noise and you know the original pressing this is a, I wish I had an original pressing of this because it would be creepier, but I do have an original pressing of Heresy from 1979, which is almost creepier. And there's another, there's a different cover of that too. It's is even there? creepier. And well, show me the, the what's on the back of it. Well, what's on the back? Well, is there like any okay. font? But here's the thing. So I had this shipped from France. And I have the little shipping thing, which is in French, and I cut it out and put it there. So the next person that gets it kind of has the history of where it came from and adds to it. And you got the original pressing of the creepiness and the French and the French. It just well, The thing is why it's creepier when it's an original pressing is because if you walk into a bookstore and you see like a <laughs> satanic Bible and you go, ooh, and it, you look at it printed in 2020. Ah, <laughs> But if you walk into an old bookstore and see Satanic Bible, same words, same pages, printed in 1708, whoa, creepy. 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 So a repress of this would not be creepy as the original is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Ice. Yeah. And then I'm going to go new again with Paul Bearer. And you can go, this is a doom metal, kind of doom metal ish. And you can go with any of their album covers. I'm going with this one because this woman holding this baby, her dark, dark eyes, and she doesn't look very, I don't think that baby has much of the future oh, ahead of it. Here, buddy. <laughs> What's going on in Florida over there? <laughs> People are walking in. <laughs> ah, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so yes i'm going with paul bear they're called paul bear for crying out loud so you know it's not gonna be happy music yeah yeah uh but are those ghosts standing behind that one i don't know it's weird it's i don't know upsetting. but it's a creepy painting forgotten days all right 
Oh, oh, look at this. We got some cool trivia here. The woman on Flowers of Romance sleeve is Jeanette Lee. She co-founded and owns the Rough Trade record label. Very cool. Oh, in the bottom, follow the Reaper. Yeah, they got all those Reaper, uh, Reaper, Reaper, Reaper illustrations, Wall of Voodoo compilation, Lost Weekend. Yeah. Uh, we got the Tea Party Splendor Solace. I almost pulled a Tea Party uh, Edges of Twilight for this show. Grim Reaper, See You in Hell. Yeah, it's some good, solid, traditional heavy metal illustration on that one. Brugera. Yeah, they got some pretty brutal ones. And those aren't illustration, that's for sure. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, Mr. Wonderful. The cover looks like this emoji. P.I.L. Flowers <laughs> Romance again. Atomic Rooster. Uh, Death Walks Behind You. Uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, uh, over to Todd. All right. So uh, I went with uh, Steely Dan's The Royal Scam. And you have a gentleman sleeping here on a bench. And it looks like he's dreaming about the buildings coming to life. And uh, apparently... This uh, image of just the buildings with the monster heads was going to be used for a Van Morrison album, and they decided not to use it. Oh, and wow. uh, the photographer had an idea to put the man at the bottom of it, and so mm. they did that. And uh, that's uh, the, the Royal Scam, and I've, I've always thought this was great. And it's funny because you can look at this and not notice. You can just think it's buildings until you look really close at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But uh, And then I got um, from The The Infected. That's certainly, uh, that's certainly a little, yeah, great. That's a great, great record album. too. But uh, certainly great, a little bit record. unsettling. Uh, I guess the Matt Johnson, the main guy for the, the really liked this cover. It's he, somebody illustrated it for him, but he said that, that was it, these brother, these brother yeah, yeah, yeah. did all the illustrations. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he, uh, Matt Johnson said it, it looks like the nightmarish urban landscape of the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> well that's what he thought of it <laughs> maybe yeah very cool but yeah very it's cool. great nice all right my next choice i'm going with uh magazine magic murder and the weather um everything about all of magazine's album covers are kind of creepy even when they aren't even meant to be creepy but this one definitely looks pretty that's creepy with that dude there and these cops hanging about uh and it's called magic murder and the weather um back cover is kind of sparse and weird looking too uh but yeah this is just a creepy cold kind of keyboardy later magazine album um you know even i had tucked into it even their ads in the old uh in the old sounds and uh you know melody maker and stuff were just like this like really really sparse and cut out and strange looking all their ads were, were like this they had that sort of factory records kind of look to them and i uh, just pulled out you know their classic second album as well for another creepy album cover uh you know the the gatefold they even look kind of creepy where they're all kind of you know like weirdly uh proportioned um but yeah look at that uh Look at that strange kind of collage illustration on there. And it's called Secondhand De Daylight. So, yeah, everything about this band is really cool and creepy and un unsettling. And then, uh, you know, sticking sticking in sort of, uh, you know, well, kind of a post-punk world, but a whole different world, uh, you know, uh, 6,000 miles away, um, Los Angeles with X, their debut album. Um this one is a pretty creepy one because it is a burning X like that. And a little bit like the sex pistols, you know, you look at this and it looks like, you know, the punks are overthrowing society kind of thing. Right. And even the band shot classic band shot where it looks like we're back to a racer head, basically. Yeah. Uh, that sort of vibe, right. You know, black and white, you know, kind of overexposed and they all look kind of zombie ish. Right. Um, and then, you know, I had uh, just to represent uh, Raymond Pettibone there. Uh, you know, X Under the Big Black Sun is a nice creepy album cover too with with uh, another kind of cool creepy band shot. And then I pulled out Wild Gift as well. The second one has a little bit of that. Uh, this looks a little bit like a creepy sort of, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Like a voodoo shrine almost, right? X Wild Gift like that. So uh, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my little post-punk world. Two different kinds. Beautiful. Morose, rainy, uh, English, uh, fatalist kind, and uh, and uh, punkabilly kind. Well, from, one of the best things about the that 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 band photo on the back of that X album is that they look nerdy, but also kind of dangerous at the same yeah, time, which yeah. is a, exactly. a cool combination. <laughs> that, it's hard that to X, pull that off. Yeah, yeah. That X album is absolutely brilliant, and they don't get talked about enough, unfortunately. Yeah, I They're love them. Great, great band. Yeah. 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 All right, Peter, you're up. 
Okay. Well, we've got to put a little bit of Alice Cooper somehow in the mix, considering it's creepy unsettling. (laughs) So I thought I did the 1978, I'm in the sanitarium, let's write a bit of a a musical. Um, He had Bernie Taupin doing the songwriting or the lyrics. And um, I've always found this, you know, this album cover very unsettling because you're actually looking at the soul of Alice. He looks quite despondent. And your eyes, you're just drawing into his eyes. And if you look very closely, you can see there's a a photograph in both eyes. This is a wonderful gatefold. Would have been great for the gatefold show if you can open it up and it shows all these different characters that he writes about in this this album that he had an experience at the, uh, the sanitarium in New York. So from the inside, that's my creepy Alice Cooper picture. David Bowie, toy. Oh, yeah, this yeah. just creeps me out. It just <laughs> reminds me of that movie Freaks. It does. <laughs> Where he's got the David Bowie, the little shrunken head. It just, it, oh, I can't it's believe weird. it. It's, it's a head scratch. It's just so bizarre and off. Um, That's all I can say. But it just, yeah, oh, yeah just definitely influenced by the night, you know, the, the Freaks movie. And uh, yeah, Bowie as a, a shrunken something or other werewolf I don't why know. have i never seen that album <laughs> okay why? we've got a mention for any cannibal course out al- uh, corpse album cover we've got voivod war and pain says louis began dumay uh let's see we've got uh, norma jean bless the child kill the martyr we've got a uh, message from books and dreams says jason uh mirko ruaro oh it went by uh said x japan uh, let's see. We've got uh, what else? Soundgarden Super Unknowns, pretty creepy. Yeah, Fresh Fruit for Rotting Vegetables, Dead Kennedys, uh, X Good Band. Yeah, we gotta we gotta do an X show one of these days. Uh, yeah. Tom Waits, Swordfish Trombones. Yeah, pretty creepy. Aqualung is creepy. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Secondhand Daylight, a mention for magazine. That's good to see. Anything by Winger, says Ernesto Ramos. <laughs> Winger. Dangerous Toys, artist formerly known as Dangerous Toys. Peter Gabriel 4. Yeah, a bunch of those are pretty creepy. All right. So, uh, all right, Grant, take it away. All right. Cool. Here we go. Uh, uh, okay. This one was mentioned in the comments, but I'm going to bring it up here because, yeah, this is creepy. It's more weird than creepy, but Captain Beehart, oh, yeah. Trout Mass Replica. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's unsettling, because why would you put a fish on your face, for God's sakes? But it's for art. I will leave it at that. And, you know, Cap- I'm sure Frank Zappa was hanging out there as well when this was happening. But and I know everybody here has had great, great choices. But I'm sorry. I think I've got the most unsettling album cover to present. We're going to go with John Travolta and Olivia <laughs> Newton-John this Christmas Beauty. 2014. <laughs> nice. Are you trying to stir some trouble here, mate? <laughs> I'm Seriously. just saying. Come on. I'm just John's saying. hair or, or fake hair looks Fake hair, creepy. fake photo, fake, fake, fake. All right. J- JT's creepy, but don't knock I was going to say, she looks lovely, but Travolta, she looks lovely, yeah, he's pretty creepy. She <laughs> looks lovely, but it doesn't look like her, and that doesn't look like Travolta either, really. Well, that, no, Travolta's it doesn't. He's wearing his wig. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, it's creepy. Well, it's not creepy. It's just unsettling. Yeah, but yeah. Nice. I, 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 someone agree All with right. me in the chat for God's and, sake. And uh, do you recommend the songs in the album? Have you actually listened to this album, Grant? No. Do you recommend any? Is there any uh, good tracks on it? That, I uh, didn't even the know they put an album out until I stumbled across it. Wow. Right. Nice. Nice. Okay. But this All right, nice Jamie, stuff. take it away. All right. One last round. Here we go. Going in back into the early 70s, and I'm going to go with Black Widow. Sacrifice, I believe this is 1970 album, 71, something like that. And you look at that creepiness there, and you look at the creepy images on the back with the devil things, and you know, things from the early 70s just feel like they were creepier back then, or maybe it's the 50 years and it makes it old now. But you look at this and you go, Ah, is it really scary? And you put it on, and they start chanting, Come, come, come to the Sabbath, come to the Sabbath. (laughs) Satan's there. And you're like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, that a creepy. but isn't that a prog album? I understood it was prog. Is it prog? No, it's not I, heavy. It's kind of folky poppy, but it is satanic. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, oh. it's very well, satanic. 
Speaking yeah. of which, we're going with the creepiest album I probably own. I would say it's even creepier than Universe Zero. Comus. Oh, yeah. And it's first uh, utterance. Yeah. yeah. And you listen to this music, <laughs> man. And if you do the gay fold, you just know something's not right here. Yeah. And if you listen to the music, it's so creepy that it feels like you shouldn't be listening to it. Like, I don't know if I should be listening to this. It's it good, though. It's a good record. It, it, it makes you feel uneasy, like you should take the needle off the album because something's not right. Listen to it if you have it. It plays I've better backwards. CD. 71, I believe. 1971. 1971. Yeah. Get wow. yours today, kids. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right, uh, Todd, take it away. Yeah. Okay, so I've talked about this album pretty recently and, and mentioned something about not liking it, which I don't care for. I don't like looking at it, but it certainly is creepy, and I didn't think we should do this show without mentioning it. Uh, this is yeah. Stephen Wilson's The Raven That Refused to Sing, and uh, effective because, you know, there's some music on here that's pretty scary sounding. So uh, I, I thought it just needed a mention. Now, I saved my favorite for last, and... Grant knows that I'll take any opportunity to talk about this guy. This is Wasmo oh, Nariz. Yes. Things aren't right. Yeah. And uh, if you look at it, the, the spine of the album is like over here and it's, 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 it's like moved over and it's kind of cut off over here and there's a candle and he's, he's wearing two ties. But if anybody doesn't know who Wasmo Nariz is, he's this, this new wavy genius from Chicago. And uh, he uh, got signed to IRS opened for XTC and and all of these uh, uh the police and and uh only has this one album on uh on uh, uh, uh on a major label and then his second album um where he's also wearing two uh, two ties called tell me how to live is uh, uh on an independent label but uh these guys were great kind of kind of a cross between Oingo Boingo and Frank Zappa and uh, their, their, their song titles are, are hilarious. The mind is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, checking out the checkout girl. This is your elbow. Uh, Al's radiator. They're just fun and weird and super quirky. He kind of is has kind of like a Danny Elfman sort of a voice. Kind of a cross between Danny Elfman and Lena Lovitch. But if you've never heard this, definitely check it out. Did that ever come out on CD ever? It did not. not. In fact, I, I came across a uh, advertisement for when it came out and it's, it's really funny because it looks kind of like a, a mock-up and where the album cover, it says album is supposed to be, it says album cover, not available. And mm -hmm. at the bottom of it, it says uh, not available on cassette or eight track hmm. <laughs> where it usually hmm. says available on cassette or eight track. Oh, yeah. That kind of makes it creepy in itself. Funny guy. I really have never seen one of those out in the wild anywhere. Yeah, That's the first I, time I've I ever seen have it. Cover. I haven't seen it in ages. So yeah. yeah. Okay, Steve Polari is mentioning any Diamanda Gallus cover. Absolutely. Uh, quite a few Satan albums fit the bill. Spooky Tooth Ceremony, says Harry Wolovich. Uh, Victor Black uh, mentions uh, Death Leopard High and Dry. That's kind of a crappy, um, crappy and creepy um, hypnosis one. Uh, two ties, sounds like. Oh, and, uh, let's see. Celtic Cross Mo Monotheist. Yeah. Nephilim Dawn Razor. All right. So my last two. Um, I've probably talked about this album before, maybe even this album cover, but what's called Secret Treaties. Uh, anything that's kind of like hand-drawn like that in just pencil uh, or charcoal is creepy, but the band looks creepy. Eric Bloom's got a cape on. Um, you know, he's got the he's got the dogs. This reminds me of the Process Church because the dogs are dead on the back. They've been slaughtered there on the back. But even the band, yeah, everything, everything looks creepy about this, including the colors for the type and the type itself. It's just so old looking. And then I figured I'd just show the two on either side of it. That's pretty creepy in itself. Yeah. Uh, tyranny mutation. Uh, you know, the whole uh, the whole Gallic city of the future kind of thing. Albert Speer, city of the future. There's there's that on the back. And then, of course, uh, iconic and awesome and creepy is the uh, on your feet or on your knees with the church and the and, you know, the the hearse with the flag and stuff or the limo or whatever. And the amazing, amazing type style, which we yeah. drew all over our books all the time. Um, that was so cool. Uh, and then my last one's a bit of a weird choice. Um, but uh, the Smiths, uh, the Queen is dead. Um, I just always liked this uh, aesthetic. Um, it's very simple for them to do. Um, 
you know, and they've got a lot of them like this strange ways. Here we come, you know, that's not even Morrissey. That's some prim, famous British actor, I think. Uh, then we've got, you know, ones like this, even that's pretty creepy looking louder than bombs yeah. rank, you know, and then, uh, that one but uh the queen is dead is the creepiest although that i think is some serial killers right um, <laughs> uh, maybe I, I believe so but yeah queen is dead definitely uh that one just just the title it's so cool it's yeah. just it's just such a cool uh cool look to it and definitely looks like a dead person with their eyes open so uh there you go that's my final two over to uh peter Okay, so we're going to 1973, The Rolling Stones and Goat Head Soup. So what uh, Jagger was trying to do was trying to get a bit of a Catherine Hepburn, Africa uh, queen feel with a veil over him. But to me, it looks like he's being suffocated. <laughs> and um, it's kind of imminently very kind of scary and unsettling. I've always found this to be unsettling, this, this uh, album cover. So that gets my pick for yeah. The Rolling Stones. Um, I'll finish up with a new band. So I started Gothic and I think I will finish Gothic. This is a relatively newish band. They've been around since 2007, The Horrors. So this is Strange House. Um, just the, the setup, it's just very Gothic looking and you've got that uh, sort of that monster head behind them. It's all in black and white. Um, the horrors are kind of like the, the bastard child of, say, The Cure and Jesus and the Mary Chain. Worth checking out. Lots of uh, shoegaze and noise. But um, all of their album covers are kind of unsettling and pick up a bit of a Cure theme. But, no, I like this one. It's kind of unsettling, strange house. The band, The Horrors. That's a good one. Nice, nice. Okay, we've got a mention for this mortal coil. We've got BOC, heaven forbid. Yeah, that's got some story behind it with the unfinished hand uh, drawn on there. I believe that's a hammer still in The Queen is Dead. Thank you for that, Steve Polari. I uh, definitely agree with you, Martin. Louis Began Dumais says the Smiths. Kickaxe, welcome to the club. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool one with the, the heads being all like fans, right? Marilyn Manson, Hollywood. Yeah, a lot of Marilyn Manson are very creepy. Yeah. Um, they did a good job with those. Anything by Yoko Ono. <laughs> gets a mention again. Live Evil gets a mention. Black oh. Sabbath. John Bolt, uh, Julie's 16th birthday. Lol. Rage Against the Machine, self-titled. Yeah, of course, that one with the uh, iconic photo there. UFO Obsession, Nazareth Hair the Dog. Yeah, that one always scared us as kids, right? Because you're because the logo's not there anymore, right? Or you know, that that even in itself was unsettling. Where's the Nazareth logo? Um, let's see, Holocaust the Nightcomers is a good, creepy, monochromatic looking one. Just a couple colors on that, right? Hurricane Over the Edge, Slave to the Thrill, Scorpions Blackout. Yeah, that's a great album cover. Um, yeah, there you go. And over to Grant. All right, here we go. All right, so for my final two, well, this I'm going to mention it anyway. So, yeah, this is probably where everything unsettling first started. Beatles, Yesterday and Today. Of course, you know, some of these slipped out. Some of these were pasted over. There are second state, third state covers out there. But yes, the original cover is creepy. I, I don't have a problem with this photo shoot. The Beatles were just trying to have some fun. You know, how many photo shoots did the Beatles have by 1966? Tons. They were pretty, you know, oh, what are we going to do? So here we go. And this is the cover that they wanted for this. It does look like they're having fun. Yeah, if you see the whole series, they're doing all kinds of stupid stuff. But uh, Still would have sold a ton of records. I think yeah. this was an Ethan Russell shoot. So, you know, I think it was good. I think it's fine, but 1960. My number 10, and I actually do have a prop because I bought this while I was in down here in uh, Fort Myers. Red Cross. Uh, neurotica that came out in uh, 1987 on big time i'm not sure what's going on here but the band is surrounded by these masks yeah i don't know i yeah. kind of like the cover i like the font okay I, it's a good power pop record but the i don't know a oh. recent acquisition that i thought i'd throw in nice nice yeah okay so where are we at? 754. Well, I'll, I'll rattle off some honorable mentions uh, yeah. that, I had, that I was going to use. So uh, Angel Witch, Angel Witch, uh, Exciter, Violence and Force with the holding uh, holding of the hand. The Who Odds and Sods is really weird and 
goofy looking, creepy, difficult to cure, rainbow. Alice Cooper, I was going to mention billion dollar babies, killer or love it to death. All of those are kind of creepy. The church seance. Uh, oh, yeah. That one. Creepy. That's, a, that's a great one. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, Roger Waters amused to death is a little creepy. Um, uh, Black Sabbath never say die and technical ecstasy. Both are, are a little creepy and unsettling And there. You know, that's hypnosis is kind of steely frosty. Look again, the damn strawberries with the pig um, UFO, no heavy petting with the transfusion with the monkey going on there. Um, and acid bath, pagan terrorism tactics with a, you know, painting by Jack Kevorkian. And then some of their other ones have paintings by other serial killers and stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, with the clown, the evil clown and stuff. Yeah. They're, they're really creepy. Um, they were almost too creepy to put on. So, uh, that's all I had for honorable mentions. And, Todd, and since you mentioned that Martin, I'm going to mention the church remote luxury too. creepy also creepy goes hand in hand with seance so check yeah. that out too and todd yeah. mentioned oingo boingo and it reminded me of when they changed their name to just boingo and released an album in what 93 and did that yes oh, yeah. that's creepy that creepy thing <laughs> yeah. there right. yeah i don't know what the hell's going on with that but that's weird anybody else have any honorable mentions before we wrap it up uh blood ceremony the edrich dark more satanic things Hmm. And they're called blood. There's oh, a yeah. theme with you, Jamie. There's definitely a theme with you. <laughs> That's creepy. Say, stuff, though. I know it is creepy. Oh, well, it's Halloween, yeah. damn near. Yeah. All right. I've got one bridge over okay. troubled waters. Um, Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> That's creepy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. From last week. Yeah, yeah, that does count. It does We've got to mention here for Soul Asylum Hang Time, definitely with the bodies hanging down there. That's a pretty cool one. To I told the wet sprocket fear. We've got uh, Dr. John the Night Tripper. Yeah, that is really creepy for <laughs> what's inside. That's for sure. Any Unsane album cover, Cathedral Forest of Equilibrium. Van Halen, fair warning. That is a creepy album cover. That's for sure. Uh, that's a, that's a, uh, a detail from a William Kerlach uh, painting. And he was a famous Canadian pa painter. Yeah. Had a lot of, lot of, uh, um, you know, psychiatric issues as well. It's a it's a pretty creepy one. Phil Collins, all the reissue solo album covers. Sorry, Phil says Greg D. Warrior Age of Future, The Code of Life. Uh, yeah, War Warlock self titled. Uh, anyways, Grant. Take all right, corn. Cool. corn has some right. creepy ones. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. more yeah. satanic ones. Yeah, no, that's not satanic. <laughs> okay, well, breaking the you're breaking the. Yeah. All right, everybody. I want to thank everybody in the chat that showed up. We couldn't get to everybody, but you know, there's a lot of people here tonight, but I truly want to thank everybody for showing up. I also want to thank our panel, Jamie Todd and Peter Kerr, and also Martin, of course, because Martin's always here. But next week, we'll be doing this again. What are we going to be talking about? I don't know, but stay tuned and it'll be something. So I want to thank everybody once again, and let's wrap this dog up and we will see you. All right. Thanks, time. guys. Talk All to you right. later. Thanks. Bye now. <laughs>